Hello everyone. For today's video, I thought I would go through this book that I have. It is a book that highlights the graphics design work of a company called Immigre. And this book was put out at their 10th anniversary. And Immigre has been a huge influence in my outlook on graphics design. And I think the stuff they do is amazing and beautiful and is definitely a huge influence in the world of graphics design in the 80s and the 90s and even today. So this book kind of catalogs the growth of Immigre. It was started by um, Rudy Vanderlands and Susanna Lico and together they started a magazine in the 80s that was specifically geared towards people from other countries who have come to live in the United States, hence the name Immigre. But it very soon morphed into something else. With the introduction of the Macintosh in 1984, it um, slowly moved from being a magazine about um, immigre, people immigrating to the United States, and quickly became a magazine about design, specifically showcasing the design work of the people who were putting the magazine together. And because the Mac was very new, and the laser writer, the laser printer from Apple was very new, they started to create their own fonts. And so from that grew a huge library of fonts that you can buy from Immigre. And Immigre fonts are by far my favorite fonts. I designed with them many times, as many times as I can get away with. And the magazine became more and more influential in the graphics design community and a lot of the style that influenced other graphics designers came from the Immigre magazine. The Immigre style is definitely one that understands design conventions and then very deliberately breaks those design conventions into something that is unexpected, that gets your attention, and makes traditional classical graphics designers very upset. <laughs> um, they take the elements of the page in typography and begin to play around with it and break it up and change it around in ways that make you look at the foundations the graphics design is built on in a new way. And this here is um, 1984, one of the first, if not the first, magazine. It was called Immigre. And you can see here that, you know, the, the masthead of the magazine is a little off kilter and the graphics break off the edge and here on the inside pages, even though they look mostly typeset at this point, they um, you just have these little elements that come in, not at a right angle, but slightly askewed. And you have here this photo montage. And you have these photos here. And then right down here you have this other photo. And it looks like it's been ripped off of here and put down here and it makes you look and it makes you think about the design of the page. And here we have some other early design work in the first magazine. And here we have an illustration that was done on one of the early Macs. Um, you can tell by the black and white nature of it pixelated. 
um, the the Max made in the early 80s had a very distinctive style to them when you created graphics on them because the pixels were either black or white there was no shades of gray on the first one so any shade of gray that you see is done through a pixelated pattern and there were thousands of different pixelated patterns that you could use to achieve different levels from black to white. So here we have some of the first fonts that they designed for the Mac using that stark pixelated look where the pixel was either 100% black or it was 100% white. So they took advantage of that and made some beautiful fonts that were just black and white boxy and pixelated here's some other magazines from the second magazine it was done in 85 and you see this one is definitely a little bit more attention is paid to the actual design And I think um, the passion of the founders definitely shows through. Here's some more fonts that they designed. Oakland 6, Oakland 8, Oakland 10, Oakland 15, Universal 19, Universal 8. And the number refers to the number of pixels high that the font is. This is the third magazine. I stumbled upon Emma Gray when I was doing an internship with a graphics designer out of college. And he had several of the Emma Gray magazines in his office. And um, I would look through them. And I just fell in love with the aesthetic that was presented. I think a lot of Emma Gray's designs in the 80s influenced the kind of grungy graphics design style of the 90s. Although I think there's a lot of people who tried to recreate this style and did not necessarily um, pull it off as well as many other people did. This right here, if I can show you, I'm going to move this. I absolutely love this design with these fonts. Um, Immigre kind of brought into use the tall, skinny font um, that you saw everywhere in design around this time period. This is definitely a design that is dated from the 90s and the 80s. But um, I think it's beautiful with the globe in the background and this being stark black and then the lighter gray and the white and the font just pulls it all together. I did a piece um, inspired by this for my exit portfolio in college using that globe in the background. So then, as computers became high resolution and the laser printer came out and was able to print fonts in a high resolution, they created fonts that were smoother. Instead of blocky like this, they were able to incorporate curves in their fonts. And they really started to produce a great many fonts. And again, a lot of the fonts were these long, elongated, tall fonts that let you fit a lot of words into a small space. Matrix font. Taking the slab serif 
here and reducing it down to just kind of a funnel triangle shape on all of the edges of the words like here and here and simplifying that shape in the font. And here we have a design for the eighth Emma magazine. Um, this was the cover, just beautiful and simple. And then you opened it up and you had this, and the theme of this was alienation. And the size of the magazines, I believe, if I remember correctly, were about the size of this book. So the magazines themselves were huge. Um, and you, you held them and they were substantial in your hand. So here's some other magazine designs. And here is a type catalog that they released. Again, geometric squares and type, and that's about it, but overlaid and put into a way that is unexpected with the slants of the type in all different directions, kind of posed with the rigid grid of the squares. And that is kind of reflected in this font, which is very geometric and follows very strict rules as to how it is put together. But it is put together in such a way that is very fun and dynamic, even though it is very geometric. And they really started to play with the design. I believe if you've ever seen any um, early Wired magazines, they were heavily influenced by um, the design style that was pioneered by Emma Gray. Like this. This starts to just overlap the shapes. So you stop seeing individual letters and you start to see the rhythm of the letter shapes throughout the alphabet and how all of them are part of that same family and part of that same rhythm. Legibility was not a top priority of an immigrant magazine. And oftentimes, Wired Magazine in its early days was heavily criticized for not being very readable. But at the same time, it was very dynamic. And even in a design like this, where you have things overlapping, it is not chaos. Even though it is unusual, it is not just thrown together. And I think that's where a lot of the grunge style that came later in the 90s kind of missed the boat in the fact that chaos itself was the, the object and there was no longer any type of thought as to the design of the page where with a page like this even though there is overlapping and some sections are hard to read the overall page holds together as a design and this is a font called senator um, very very popular in the um, early 90s um, a beautiful font i've used it several times um, but unfortunately, I think it has become to be identified with that time period in design. And whenever I see it, it kind of dates the design because it was so heavily used in the design world, especially for book covers. Um, you saw it everywhere on book covers for several years. And here we have a very interesting layout for this paragraph. It has these chunks knocked out of it. And also just taking the type all the way absolutely to the edge of the page. Not leaving it 
any breathing room. But the font itself is not heavy enough to take over. I think that's a good balance. And here we have some other fonts. We've now moved into the 90s. And here they're experimenting with many different weights of the same font or fonts that have different weights interspersed throughout to give the entire page it's like painting with type there are no there's no pictures or graphics on this page but yet it still is dynamic and it still has a shape and design to it and a flow So, if you love type, Imigre is a huge influence because that is pretty much their primary means of expressing themselves is through typography. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. My battery is about to run out, so I am working my way through the book so you can see every page. And here we have some full color. So my battery is about to die, so I wanted to say thank you for watching. And please subscribe to my channel. And I will be making more videos for you all. Thank you very much.